Hi everyone, welcome to the final video in this free part series where we break down the grade of a real life project using some of the custom DCTLs available in my store. In the previous two videos, we covered project setup, prep and look development. In this final part, we'll dive into the shot level grading process. This stage often takes the most time, so instead of grading every single shot in real time, I'll focus on explaining the principles and techniques that I use that you can apply to your own projects. For this video, we'll be working on the clip node tree where our fixed node setup is already in place. We briefly went over importing the node tree in video one, including converting some of our nodes into shared nodes. If you're not familiar with that setup, please check out the first video. Before we start adjusting shots, it's worth explaining why I organized my node tree this way. At the base, you'll see six nodes in a parallel mixer, three at the top for exposure and three at the bottom for a second adjustment I call flare. Flare works similarly to exposure, but instead of shifting the whole image, it adjusts the black point smoothly. This makes it an excellent companion to exposure, which leaves the black point untouched. My flare node is a DCTL I may share soon, but you can achieve a similar effect directly in Resolve. Just set a node to linear, use the offset wheel, and you'll see that smooth curve for adjusting the black point. A softer, more elegant version of the log shadows wheel. Back to the workflow, the three exposure nodes and three flare nodes are organized as S for scene, A for angle, and C for clip. Scene sets the overall exposure for the entire scene, which is why we converted it into a shared node. Angle adjusts exposure across all clips shot from that same camera angle. And clip fine tunes individual clips that drift because of changing light or other inconsistencies. The idea here is to work broadly affecting as many shots with beneficial adjustments at once as possible and then working our way down to specific angles and clips as it's necessary. We'll start with the scene node, saved as a shared node. This adjustment applies across every shot in the sequence, helping establish a strong base. I recommend cycling through your timeline and settling on a scene level exposure that works for the majority of shots. Don't worry if a few clips end up slightly under or overexposed at this stage, the node tree is designed to handle those outliers later. For now, the goal is simply to find an exposure that benefits the vast majority of shots within the scene. For the footage within this scene, underexposing by 0.41 stops feels right to me. Once the scene exposure is found, we can move on to the angle node. This node isn't shared, but we can work efficiently by switching the timeline to source order, which will reorganize your clips based on their time of recording, allowing takes from the same angle to be placed together. Then we can either copy the grade or use ripple node to selected clips, applying the adjustment across all matching shots. To perform the ripple node changes to selected clips command, I would recommend navigating to keyboard shortcuts, typing in ripple node changes, and then checking the keyboard shortcut assigned to this action. You can even change it here or leave it to whatever it defaults to on your version and system. There are a few settings in preferences that I would recommend enabling when using the ripple node feature. So head into preferences, user and color. The key options to turn on are preserve node numbers when adding nodes, switching clips, select same node, and under ripple mode, set target clips, exact values changed. These three are the most important. With them enabled, switching between clips will always keep you on the same node you were using. And when you ripple an adjustment, it will copy the new changes across. Every recent adjustment in that node transfers perfectly. You can experiment with the other ripple options, which copy only partial changes like percentages or unit values. But personally, I don't find those useful for the way that I work with ripple nodes. Finally, I also recommend enabling switching nodes, select same node in the color page menu, just to mirror the preference setting. Finally, the clip node handles subtle clip specific tweaks. Most of the time I don't use it, but it's invaluable when a single shot feels different because of changes in the lighting conditions. This free node stack is powerful because every adjustment is perfectly invertible. For example, if I underexpose the scene by two stops, then overexpose it by two stops, the image returns exactly to where it started. The changes cancel each other out. But for this to work, the nodes must remain side by side. If you drop something like a contrast curve in between, that perfect inversion no longer holds. The same principle applies to the flare nodes at the bottom. Next up are my windows nodes. I set these to linear within the gamma settings. 
which gives you control in terms of exposure. While some prefer using standard gamma or gain here, I find linear gain delivers more preferable results. Next is Hue Tetra, a tool built on Steve Yedlin's Tetra adapted for Resolve. I've remapped the controls from red, green and blue to hue, saturation and luminance, making it more intuitive to work with. The results are identical to what you'd get with Tetra, but navigating with HSL controls feels much simpler. If you've used my palette tool before, the interface will look very familiar, but the underlying effect here is different. Palette has smooth, curvy adjustments, ideal for overall look development. Tetra has sharper, rectilinear adjustments, perfect for aligning mismatching shots. I think a good node tree doesn't only get you from point A to point B, but also makes it easier to get you from point B to point C. If you only give yourself one exposure node, you'll find yourself assigning a different value to various shots. This isn't inherently a problem, but then if you later decide that you want to completely overhaul the scene level exposure, readjusting every shot globally can cause your workflow to become slightly messy. You could use the ripple node feature for this, but since it requires manual management, I find handling it at the scene level a bit tricky. For example, if you click away from a clip and then return, the ripple buffer is lost and you can't ripple that change anymore. That's why I usually reserve the ripple feature for angle changes. It's applied to fewer clips, and because all the angle nodes receive the same adjustment, even if I accidentally click off the clip, it's quick and easy to fix afterwards by manually copying the whole node if necessary. And that's the idea behind this node tree. My approach is really just about keeping things simple. Strong color management, a project-wide look, and broad C-level adjustments that handle most of the heavy lifting. By the time these are set, your images are usually 90% ready. If you would like a full real-time grading session, please leave a comment and I'll consider doing that for a future video. So give this workflow a try and let me know in the comments if you see yourself using it. Thanks again for watching.